On the 7th of April, 1994, Federal Express Flight 705 embarked on a journey from Memphis International Airport, Tennessee, to San Jose International Airport in California, scheduled to carry electronic equipment across the USA. It had three pilots and a non-revenue passenger. Auburn Calloway, a 42-year-old former Navy pilot and martial arts expert, was possibly facing termination from Federal Express for falsifying his flight hours. Seizing the opportunity as the first to board the plane, Auburn discreetly brought along two claw hammers, two club hammers, a spear gun, and a knife cleverly concealed in a guitar case with the intention of hijacking and crashing the aircraft. His motive was for his family to receive the benefits from the $2.5 million life insurance policy he had taken out in his name. Upon entering the aircraft, flight engineer Andrew Peterson was taken aback to find Auburn Calloway on the same flight. During the mandatory pre-flight inspection, Andrew discovered that the cockpit voice recorder, CVR, was switched off. Reacting swiftly, he reset the CVR and exited the aircraft to perform a visual inspection. Shortly after, 49-year-old Captain David Sanders and 42-year-old Captain Jim Tucker board the aircraft. Following the visual inspection, as the flight engineer re-enters the aircraft, he's surprised to find the cockpit voice recorder switched off once again. Taking immediate action, he turns it back on and remains vigilant, keeping a close watch on its operation. As the flight departs and reaches an altitude of approximately 18,000 feet, Auburn Calloway enters the cockpit and strikes flight engineer Peterson, followed by Captain Tucker in the head multiple times with the hammer. The impact was so severe that both Peterson and Tucker were almost rendered unconscious, unable to respond to the dire situation. Captain Sanders attempted to defend against the assailant, but was also struck with a hammer. Upon exiting the cockpit to retrieve his spear gun, Auburn Calloway prompts Captain Sanders and flight engineer Peterson to remain in their seats in an attempt to apprehend him. Then he successfully seizes the spear gun and uses it as a threat, compelling them to return to their seats. Discovering the opportune moment, Peterson, who was struggling to maintain his stance, seizes the spear gun's tip just as Captain Sanders launches an assault on Calloway. In a desperate attempt to disrupt Calloway, Tucker begins to perform acrobatics to disorient him. Abruptly, Tucker tilts the nose of the plane upward by 15 degrees, causing three men to be thrown into the galley area. Then, he aggressively initiates to roll the plane to the left, propelling all three men to the left side of the plane. After rolling it to more than 140 degrees, Tucker then decides to nosedive. The plane is now under extreme stress. With extreme pain in his head and body being half paralyzed, Tucker manages to level the plane at 5,000 feet. But as the plane levels, Captain Sanders gets another blow at his head, almost making him unconscious. Tucker then quickly contacts Memphis Center requesting a vector. In the airline industry, a vector refers to a navigational instruction given to the aircraft by air traffic control, ATC. Think of it as a specific heading or direction provided to the pilot to help guide the aircraft along its route. Vectors are commonly used to ensure safe separation between the aircraft and to navigate them through airspace, especially during takeoff, landing, or when adjusting the flight path for traffic or weather conditions. Getting back to the story, Tucker then requests Memphis Center to guide him to Memphis and advises that they would need an ambulance and police intervention as soon as they touch down. Captain Tucker then begins to roll the plane to the left in an attempt to further disorient Calloway. After rolling right and left, both the captains manage to pin Calloway to the ground even after being seriously injured. Sanders then screamed for Tucker to come to help, but unfortunately, he was the one flying the plane. Tucker then engages the autopilot, but it disconnects due to the gyros being unstable. Despite this perilous situation, Tucker leaves his seat, leaving the plane flying unattended. At the same time, Memphis Center tries to get in touch with the flight, but gets no response as there was no one in the cockpit. At this stage, the controller assumes that the flight has been taken control over by Callaway. Then Captain Sanders returns to the cockpit and Tucker seizes all Callaway's weapons. He then contacted the Memphis Center and advised 
that they might need to stop the plane in the runway and an emergency be declared with police intervention. Memphis quickly responds to Flight 705 by assuring that everything will be taken care of. As soon as Sanders prepares for landing, he encounters another problem. He thought he was flying the plane towards Memphis, but it was actually heading southwest, away from Memphis. The aircraft, comprised of electronic equipment, weighed 16 tons heavier than the maximum landing weight along with 38 tons of fuel. It's crucial that the captain dumps fuel before landing to establish a smooth landing. Sanders faces yet another challenge, as the switch for dumping fuel was in the flight engineer's panel. Being aware of the consequences, Sanders decides to land the plane without dumping fuel. Back at the galley, Calloway still trying to achieve what he intended, he dragged himself into the cockpit with Peterson on top of him. With injuries to their heads, the pilots were becoming weaker and somehow Calloway was getting his strength back. Hearing the flight escalating back in the galley, Captain Sanders makes a tough decision to kill Calloway. The flight now approaches Memphis runway 9. However, given the altitude and the speed at which the plane is now, it's too risky to land the plane safely. Sanders advises the controller that he's going to land on runway 36L, but then he faces another challenge. Runway 36L is perpendicular to runway 9. So the plane must turn right 90 degrees, followed by a 180 degree turn to its left. In order to reach the desired speed to land, Sanders extends the landing gear, speed brakes, and flaps simultaneously. He then makes the 180-degree turn vigorously. After aligning the plane with the runway, Sanders finally touches down. Flight engineer Peterson was the first one to be evacuated from the aircraft as he experienced a significant loss of blood. Tucker had a fracture in his skull. Calloway was arrested as soon as the SWAT got on the plane. All the crew members were taken to Memphis Regional Medical Center in critical condition. The aircraft incurred damages amounting to $800,000. As an aftermath of the investigation carried out by the FBI, it was revealed that Calloway was divorced in 1990, but was making every effort to support his wife and two children. He was later scheduled for a hearing for falsifying his flying hours to get a job at FedEx. As his life insurance was with FedEx, he would have lost the contract if he was dismissed. This prompted him to take a risk and intentionally crash the plane in a manner that would appear as an accident, aiming to secure insurance compensation for his family. Calloway was convicted of multiple charges, including attempted murder, aircraft piracy, and interference with flight crew operations. On August 11, 1995, he received two consecutive life sentences in federal penitentiary without parole. It took almost three years for Captain Tucker to recover after undergoing several operations. In May 1994, the crew of the Flight 705 received the Airline Pilot Association Gold Medal Award for heroism, which is the highest that any airline pilot can receive. However, none of the crews have been declared medically fit to fly commercial flights since the incident. The final DC flight was on the 31st of December 2022 before converting into MD-10 right after the Boeing merger.